each base module has a PS201 power supply module. Its main task is to supply the base module and all other expansion modules with power. The PS201 module has a 14 pole voltage terminal for connecting the auxiliary voltage supply on position B. There are two versions available today. Direct voltage 24 to 48 and 60 to 250 volts and alternating voltage 100 to 230 volts, 50 and 60 hertz. And there are three panel outputs and two panel inputs as well as a live contact. Detailed information on the terminal assignment can again be found in the device manual. Then the module offers the opportunity to connect so-called plug-in modules at two positions, E and F. These can be additional communication modules or measuring transducer modules. This device has an Ethernet module with two electrical interfaces with RJ45 plugs on position E, for example, to connect it to a substation automation system. Position F is not assigned in this case and has a cover plate. It can easily be used in the future to expand the device with additional communication modules or measuring transducer inputs. More information on the various communication modules can be found in the device manual. The time synchronization interface is located on position G. It is designed as a 9-pole D sub-interface and can handle time synchronization signals for direct voltage of 5, 12 and 24 volts. Synchronization can be carried out via DCF77 or RFB signal, for example. Below, on position H, is the connection for the on-site operation panel of surface-mounted devices or devices with a detached operation panel. This interface is designed as a 15-pole D-sub interface. Now for the battery, which is located in the separate battery compartment. The battery has a protective film when delivered to protect it against early discharge. Before commissioning the device, remove the protective film by pulling it out by the flap. The integrated Ethernet interface is located on position J. It is always part of a base module and is usually used to configure the device with Dixie 5 via Ethernet. In addition, the connection enables communication using Ethernet capable protocols like IEC 61850. Below that, on position K, we can find the so-called Ethernet COM link, which is only available for modular devices. This interface serves to connect the so-called CP202 module, which can be used as a carrier model for additional plug-in modules. To expand the device with additional communication interfaces if required. Finally, there are two grounding connections. One for grounding the overall device and one for the connection between the modules. It is important to ground each module with a solid, low resistance operational grounding. Let's now get to the expansion module, in this case an IO205. It has 12 binary inputs and 16 binary outputs. The binary signals are again connected with the voltage terminal blocks mentioned before. They are connected to the module simply with the plug and the spring clips on the sides. In the left bottom corner, you can again see the two screws for grounding cables. Next, I would like to point out an important detail, the nameplate. 